All right, so I am Glenn with Glenn's Auto Performance. I just wanted to do kind of a quick introduction to our GAP single cab project. Uh, for those of you that may not have been following it previously online, might be new customers or ours, or maybe are not following us on social media. Um, so it's a 99 uh, single cab, originally a 4.8 truck. I had it for a number of years. It was originally a bolt-on 4.8 truck, then it went to a 6.0 swap NA setup. Uh, was a daily driver for a long time. And... Uh, as we've built the business, we've gone a little bit more radical with the setup, and uh, it has kind of evolved over time. So just wanted to give a quick introduction. We'll show some of the aspects of the truck currently and uh, talk about it briefly, uh, talk about why we are revisiting this project, what changes we want to make moving forward, and uh, what our future plans are for the project, and uh, hopefully some competitive competition with it uh, in the future to get a little bit more use out of this thing. So. It is currently running a 6-liter ATK engine. Um, it has a Texas B228R TEA stage 2.5, 243 heads, uh, TBSS intake ported by Chewy, uh, and obviously your traditional bolt-ons, uh, electric fans, trans cooler setup, uh, most of your basic stuff. It's uh, got a modified speed engineering twin turbo kit on it. We basically use their hot side and cold side. We did make some changes to it. But it runs uh, twin TNX40 64 millimeter turbos, 0.82 AR housings on it, and uh, it is powered by the Holley Terminator X EFI. Pretty good setup, um, you know, relatively basic and straightforward. Uh, makes pretty good power, but we haven't really had a lot of time to get it dialed in and, and really see the capabilities of it because I kind of put this project on the back burner after experiencing some fuel delivery issues kind of the first time out with it. And, uh, you know, other priorities get in the way sometimes, so things get pushed to the side. But it is intended to be a street truck. I mean, full power windows, power locks, AC, radio, uh, everything is still functional in it, uh, even heat. Even though we don't use that here in Florida, I wanted everything to, to still kind of work uh, so that it technically could go back to daily driver duty if it needed to but in order to do that we got to make some changes to make this thing a little bit more comfortable so i'll go ahead and put it up on the rack and uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the drivetrain stuff and uh, we'll go from there talk real quick about the drag pack on it we get a lot of questions about tire size so uh, the rear is 15 by 10 it does have the 1320 rear brake conversion kit on it uh, running a 295 65 15 mickey thompson et street ss fronts are 17 by 7 again uh, it was built with the goal of it being a street truck i wanted a little bit more footprint up top so that it would break and handle a little bit better but obviously we still want to save some weight those are 17 by 7s 215 65 17 street radial on it uh, it's Milestar tires. I wanted something inexpensive, but I wanted something with a Z speed rating, so that fit the bill. Moving underneath the truck, I'm gonna grab a light real quick. Moving underneath the truck, we are running a Performa built level two 4L60 transmission. It's got a Circle D um, 3200 RPM 278 billet converter in it. Uh, TCI flex plate, uh, relatively run-of-the-mill stuff there. I know some guys don't like the 60. We've had good luck with it. Um, Performer Built did a great job on the build. I, I don't have any complaints with it. It's never given me any hiccups, but um, your results may vary. You know, a lot of guys go to ADE. I wanted the shorter gear ratio of the 60E. I wanted to save a little bit of weight, so we stuck with it, and it has worked for me. Got a 4-inch drive shaft uh, built by... Texas Drivetrain. I can't remember the company. It's a company out in San Antonio that does a lot of these for the trucks. Uh, 456 gears, Yukon Duragrip differential in it. Uh, AFP shock relocation kit, Viking rear shocks, speed engineering, uh, traction bars. TA diff girdle uh, with studs. You know, nothing, nothing fancy under here. I mean, obviously we've addressed some stuff, um, but it is all, you know, your common upgrades that, that most people make. Uh, it's got a full 10 AN feed line fuel system on it. It splits into dual 8 ANs, each one of those feeds each side of the fuel rail. 
Uh, return side is 8AN. It is set up for flex fuel, so we break the 8AN return into two 6AN Ys so that we don't have a flow restriction. And we have the flex fuel sensor mounted on the return. We can run 93, we can run 8E85, and any mix of it in the Holly EFI will account for the difference in the tuning and make the adjustments that we need. Right now, it basically just has dumped down pipes. That is part of the problem of why I don't drive the truck very much. It is a little loud for my liking, especially on the street. When we're driving this thing, it seems like it's always up on the converter. It's this, in my opinion, constant, nagging, annoying 2500 RPM all the way up to speed. So we're gonna get full exhaust put on this thing. Um, that's kind of up next. Uh, it'll be episode two in our series and uh, try to make this thing a little bit more pleasant to drive. So let's set this down. We'll talk about the fuel cell and search tank real quick. And uh, that should wrap up. You might have noticed the stock fuel tank was missing underneath. We do run a fuel cell. Um, you can see the surge tank on the right over here. That's actually a new addition. Uh, we cover that install in episode one. Should be coming out here within the next week or so. Uh, we just recently wrapped that installation up. But we were running this cell originally. It had two 340s in the cell. Um, it seemed like a promising setup, but we, we fought constant issues with it, losing fuel pressure under acceleration, even on the street, with anything less than like three quarters of a cell. I um, mean, you can see the pumps are positioned in the front of the cell. It does have a baffle that they sit in. I don't know if it was an issue with the second pump draining that baffle under acceleration when the second pump came on, or if it was just inertia pushing the fuel to the back of the tank. Um, but it, it was nothing but problems and to be honest with you it's why this truck has sat for probably six or eight months since the first time we took it out to the track after the new combination came together on it um, it's one of those things where sometimes you get frustrated with a project and you just set it aside for a while um, and <laughs> work through some of your disappointment so um, search tank should solve that and uh, hopefully we'll be back in business fuel side of things now um, forgot to mention front side of the fuel things FIC 1000s um, we're running one of our Holly EFI rail kits that we make the brackets for adjustable regulator mounted on the top again both rails feed independently both rails exit independently and then we've got a single return going from the regulator back to the tank we'll take a minute to talk about uh, you know where this project stands and and why we have chosen to revisit it so I, I found myself not really driving this truck very much, um, obviously not racing it because of fuel delivery issues. And overall, it just it wasn't as comfortable as it once was. Um, we got a little bit too far away from the street truck aspect and maybe a little too close to the race truck aspect, although we weren't super serious into that either. So, uh, you know, my goals for it is to make a combination that is a little bit more enjoyable to drive on the street. Uh, handles a little bit, bit better, brakes a little bit better, and uh, is a little bit more well-rounded well setup. So we hope to be able to compete in some of the Pro Touring style uh, events, both at Holly LS Fest and Pro Touring Truck Shootout. So we are looking to T56 swap the truck. I have always preferred manual transmissions. That's part of the reason that uh, I like the VET you see in the background a little bit better. It's a basic CAD CAM intake setup but it's got a T56 transmission, 390 gears, and it's a lot of fun to drive on the street, even though it doesn't make but half the power of the truck. So we're gonna put a third pedal in it. Uh, it'll be a little bit more fun to drive, at least in my opinion. And um, that'll also help with not being up on the converter constantly when we're just driving normal on the street. Uh, but in addition to that, we're going to full exhaust. We're gonna put some mufflers on it. Of course, we'll have cutouts so that we can open them up and eliminate some of that restriction behind the turbos uh, but we're also hoping to go to a little bit uh, larger diameter wider wheel setup uh, address some of the suspension concerns get it riding a little bit better uh, maybe put a little bit better brakes on the front uh, obviously reinstall a front sway bar uh, and get less away from the drag style setup and into a setup again that, that brakes handles and rides a little bit better and uh, hopefully we can have some fun with it too and do a little bit uh, of something different. There are a couple guys out there that are doing those types of builds with these trucks now. They are certainly interesting to me. You guys have probably seen them as well. They've probably been interesting to you. So we want to get in on some of that fun. And uh, we're going to start making the changes and cover it on YouTube. And hopefully you guys enjoy watching a little brief mini-series on it. Thank you.